instructional video about what to wear during a day at the Capitol. Okay, so we're starting with the trunk and we're going to start off with a base layer of a thin long john. Um, if it's really, really cold, then you can go with a more heavy, heavier fleece um, long john instead of the thinner one. And then we go with a nice heavy wool pant. And again, for finding out where to get all of your clothing, um, go on our website um, and we have a list of where you can get them. We've got a pair of wool pants and this will be the warmth. And for the most part, this is, will be good for your traveling. But on those really big lakes, um, it gets pretty windy, so you would want um, something windproof. So we've got these, um, this is a nylon cotton blend of a wind pant. It's really big, just goes right over top. This is uh, super fashionable and uh, can hike them up nice and high. Um, this is a, a key combination for the bottom layers because it's all breathable. Oh, I'm getting warm. All right, so now we're going to do our moccasins. Um, once you have your uh, trunk layers on, you've got your long johns underneath along with your wool pants. Before you put on your wind layer, you're going to put your moccasins on. We start with a base layer of a wool sock by getting a thicker wool sock that can go over top. Yeah, so if you don't have a big pair of knitted socks, you can just put on another pair of uh, thicker wool socks like this. Uh, it doesn't need to be fancy like this. So maybe I'll leave these on and put on uh, this sock as well, just because I have it. And then I've got my uh, duffel liner and that provides a little bit more cushion uh, for your feet and it also insulates you a little bit better from the So there, we've got a nice uh, fitting liner, as well as all my socks, and then the moccasin. There we go, wiggle it on. So as you can see, it's packed to the nines, can't get any more stuff than that, but there's still wiggle room. I can still move my foot around, and that's one of the key principles uh, to keeping your feet warm with these moccasins. Tie them on tight. We've got these wraparounds to really cinch it at the ankle, prevent them from slipping down. Okay, and there we have it. That is our boot. So our backup is a rubber overboot, and this here is called the Tingly. It's all natural rubber. Also the really great thing about these is that they roll up, so they're easily stowed away in your emergency kit uh, for when you do need them. The other solution um, would be the Canadian Tire Kamek or Sorel or any of the other that you can get at Canadian Tire. They've got the hard uh, rubber outer and then the felt uh, liner inside. So if that's your um, rubber boot, make sure you get a, a big enough size uh, that you can fit all of your insulating layers inside uh, your boot as well. All we do for this is if it gets warm, it's too warm, then all of the liners that were inside the moccasin just get slipped on, you take the outer moccasin off, slip your foot on, and you're good to go. So these are our two options uh, for our footwear. We've got the breathable, uh, cozy moccasin for almost all weather, and then we've got the backup in our uh, emergency kit for uh, the warm weather. Okay, so we're moving on to the upper layers. So we start again with this merino wool 
uh, base layer. It's really good for um, moisture wicking and um, odor resistant. So you can pretty much wear this same shirt all trip long. Um, so we have this second, it's a heavier merino wool and this goes on top. So you've got this uh, mid-weight layer. And if it was really cold outside again, I have an, a second mid-weight layer and this is a half zip your midweight. So I'm not going to put that on because it's not too cold outside right now. Um, but I am going to put on my big bulky um, heavy weight which is a button up and this is 100% wool. It's uh, very very thick and warm. warm. Okay and then our final layer for our top is going to be our windproof layer like the bottoms. Um, this is called an anorak. It's big, bulky, and it's tightly woven. It's cotton canvas. It is 100% breathable and also windproof. So there, when the wind is howling on a big open lake, you are so protected. As you can see, I'm all nice, big and bulky, but I'm really comfortable. I can still move around. I can do squats if I want. If I want to lift a tree up over my head, I still can do that. I've got lots of room. I've got lots of room in my hood, and that allows me to put on a big bulky hat if I need to, if it's really cold. And all three layers, or all four layers, whichever I'm wearing, they all go together really well, and they're breathable. So at the end of the day, I'm going to be dry, and that's one of the most important parts of winter camping, um, is staying dry. So if you don't have this nice big anorak, uh, that's okay. We have alternatives to use just a ski jacket, something windproof but still bulky enough to fit all of your nice wool layers underneath. It won't be as breathable as a cotton anorak. Okay, so now we're moving on to our extremities. Start by putting on our scarf. This is my tube scarf. I like it so that goes underneath here. You can tuck it in. And then I've got my crown, I call it. This is a felted wool and it's almost windproof. <laughs> so you put your toque on and you can put your uh, hood on, and there you've got a bomb proof uh, hat system. You've got your warmth and your windproof layer buckle it up like that and then if it's really cold you can uh, pull this up over your face um, and so your only your eyes are showing but if your eyes are still cold then you can whip out your goggles and over the top they go and now I'm impenetrable <laughs> for your hands uh, we like to use mittens and again, 100% wool, super thick, and uh, there's no substitute for thickness. If you, <laughs> if you don't have uh, thick mittens, then your hands will be cold. So the thicker the better. And then on top of that, these again aren't quite windproof, so we go with a durable uh, leather, this is deer skin, and again, it is 100% breathable slip these on and again I've got fur on my mitts and that keeps the snow from coming in and once I've got that on again I've got a windproof mitt it's ready for action and these fit nicely uh, with my anorak it goes right over top and that cinches down so that now I'm truly ready to go all right so just about ready to bear the storm. Got all my gear on underneath me, including now I've tied up tight my anorak so that the wind won't come up. Uh, so this is what you'd be wearing for a typical cold winter day. Of course you're not going to wear all this all the time, uh, which is why we have a, a day pack ready to just strip down uh, our layers whenever we need to. Um, one last thing to note is that we do love the down jacket um, for those really cold days 
when uh, we want to take a lunch stop and uh, there's not much shelter available so we can just put on our down jacket and uh, and then bundle up nice and warm with it. So that is all of the gear that you would need on a typical cold winter day and uh, of course your equipment will vary um, according to weather changes and uh, workload. So thank you for watching and for more information visit the website at lordofthenorth.com for complete